Hello everyone, welcome back to Skill Deck channel. My name is Richa and I'm back again with the next video. Today in this video, we are going to learn how to make a compelling resume. What does an ideal resume look like? What are interviewers expecting from us? What they are looking to see in the resume? And also in this video, we are going to learn few tools which will help us to create our resume quickly and efficiently. So are we ready? Yes. So let's go and let's start learning. By then, please subscribe to Skill Deck channel. Visit our website www.theskilldeck.com to have an update about our upcoming courses. So let's go and now let's start learning. Let's talk about how I can make a compelling resume. Before we talk about how to make a compelling resume, there is a need to understand the goal of a resume. Why we make the resume? We make the resume to make others party understand that how I as a candidate is beneficial for them. What they are looking for, what is the competence, skill, what they are expecting, KSA, knowledge, skill and attributes in person, whether I have that, that you have to present in the resume. You are writing a resume to convince someone that you are capable of performing that task, the duties. You are telling them that, okay, what you are looking in particular in that particular job description, yes, I am the suitable candidate for that. Because Now, at the same time, we need to understand the person who is reading your resume, that person is getting so many other resumes, might be that person has so many other tasks also to do. Now, how your resume will stand out. Okay, you have written everything that it's suitable, what they were expecting you have written, but how your resume will stand out from all other resumes that is coming to that interviewer. The first thing you need to know is ATS, Applicant Tracking System. Nowadays, all the companies are using the ATS, Applicant Tracking System. If I have to say around 90% of the companies, they have an ATS system. So which automatically shortlist the candidate, how you will ensure that your resume bypass that or your resume is suitable for the ATS, how ATS matters. So ATS will qualify your resume if you will follow the certain instructions. Now, what are the instructions? Let me teach you. ATS will not be friendly with the two column resume. So on your screen now, you are able to see the two column resume here, the education skills are written in. On the right side, there are there is the experience written. ATS is not friendly with such kind of resumes. So if you will write your resume in the two different columns, then sometimes the ATS might miss your education excellent. Sometimes some details of your right hand side, what's written or your experience that can be missed. So that's the reason if your resume is divided into the two different columns, the ATS will not be able to understand that and you will lose your chance to get a call for the job. What is the right format? The right format is the format now what you are able to see on the screen. It is called as a traditional format. In traditional format, we first write our name, address, phone, email ID, and then the job title, and then our job summary. I saw a few of the resumes written with objectives, what is the, why they are looking for the job, that's not required. Give your professional summary after your job title. And after that, do mention your core competence. So if you'll see your one third of, first one third part of your resume should look like the one what you are able to see on your screen. Don't put any information in header and footer. If you will put any information, sometimes people put their name or a designation in header and footer, then also there is a chance that ATS will miss the information. ATS might usually don't pick any information from header and footer. So what we have learned to be ATS friendly, please don't use a two column format. Use the format what I'm showing you right now, a single column format. Start writing your resume with your name, your contact details, your job title. After that, give a professional summary and your main competence. What are the skill sets you have? That's your, that's how your first one third or part of your resume should look like. Now let's see how our resume template should look like. We have learned that yes, the top third of the resume should have a first name and a last name. 
phone number, contact detail, email ID, your LinkedIn profile, then your job title, and then your competence and the skills. After that, a job summary, and then the work experience. A work experience should be in a chronological order, starting with the recent job where you are in, and should not have any objective, etc. in the resume. You should not put anything in header and a footer, just in a work experience. And after your work experience, put education, any other skills you want to demonstrate, your volunteer experience, any awards, any membership, that all things you can put later. So this is the ideal template of a resume, which I will attach in this video also for your use. You can use this, we'll give you a Google link for this. Now we are going to learn what are the tools we can use to create a resume template. We will see a template. I'm using first the chat GPT to create a resume template. Let's go to chat GPT. In chat GPT, I have two different versions. I'm having a paid access also and the free access also first for the free access. So let's say chat GPT, give me idle resume template. I am a HR director with 18 years of experience. Now we can see ChatGPT is creating a template for me, which I can edit later. So the format is same that you need to tell ChatGPT, the ChatGPT says, okay, put your name, put your details, put your profile summary, professional summary, put your competence here, then professional experience, then education, then skills, other skills, your affiliations, that all. This is called a traditional format and we use, it's better to use a traditional format rather than putting a photo on the resume, having a different colors. Those things, the images doesn't work well with ATS. Photo should be avoided because that can create bias. Might be after looking your photo, the interviewer uh, reject you or might accept you. So business will come with the photo. That's why we keep, we avoid putting up the photo on the resume. This is how you can create a template. But if, if you buy a paid version, they charge around $20, then it will allow you to even uh, download the resume template in a Word file. So I'm going to my paid version now. Need a document for the above template let's see what chat gpt has to say you need to remember a chat gpt is like a human being anything you want to uh, as you talk to the human let's say that i want to uh, put this in senior manager i worked these four things please add that also so that will be added. You have to think like how you talk with a human. That's how the chat GPT is going to add and amend the things all. Now let's wait. It's analyzing the things. I always suggest that if you can, you should go with a paid version of the chat GPT because in a paid version, then you are able to use other chat GPT tools also. Now see, I got a file which I am allowed to download, but in a free version, these documents I will not be allowed. The documents downloading is not allowed. I got a template now which I can download and I can use it.